It was the year 1560 on a warm summer morning in the kingdom of Hungary. A tiny baby pierced the air with a blood-curdling scream. The future blood countess was born. Elizabeth Bathory was born to a noble family, one of the most powerful Protestant families in Hungary. Her father, Baron George Bathory, and her mother, Baroness Anne Bathory, were both born as Bathorys. Separated by generations, the Bathorys were distant cousins. This was common in the 1500s. Marriage was kept in the family and used as political guidance so the powerful could stay in charge. The world in which the Bathory's lived was harsh and brutal. It is said that the servants inside the Bathory's castle would receive regular beatings and often endure cruel torture. As Elizabeth grew up, she was kept hidden away, almost like a princess locked in a tower. It wasn't for malicious reasons, rather, Elizabeth was prone to seizures. Born with epilepsy, she would often have violent shakes, lose control, and was subject to fits of rage. She was never left alone for too long. Family members would regale her with tales about Satanism and sadomasochism, every child's ideal bedtime story. Days would pass and Elizabeth would witness brutal punishments at the hands of officers on her family's estate, including a woman accused of theft who was sewn up inside the belly of a dying horse, left to die. When such atrocious behavior was the norm, one gets used to the violence, maybe even getting enjoyment out of watching the suffering of those around them. For Elizabeth, she loved watching the abuse. She would laugh and was pleased to watch as the servants and thieves paid with their lives by a brutal torment. At the young age of 10, Elizabeth was set to marry a young man named Count Fernick Nadasi. Five years later, by 1575, they were married and moved into a castle gifted to Elizabeth by her husband. Ketchdike Castle would soon become a house of horrors for all who walked within its halls. Elizabeth's husband was often away fighting in the long war against the Ottomans. During his time in the military, Count Ferenc was so brutal that he was nicknamed the Black Knight of Hungary. Ferenc would have made Vlad the Impaler very happy as he would regularly partake in publicly displaying his enemies impaled on sticks. When he and Elizabeth Bathory would reunite, they would spend their days bonding over torture. It was said that Count Ferenc introduced more torture into Elizabeth's already violent world. Elizabeth Bathory grew an infatuation with bloodshed. However, as time passed, Ferenc would fall ill and eventually passed in 1604. This is when word of Elizabeth's violent tendencies would make their way around Hungary. Servant girls would go missing and whispers of how they spent their last breaths would horrify everyone. Rumors of Elizabeth's torture came out. She would cover her victims in honey, leaving them outside to be slowly devoured by insects. Others would be stripped naked and left outside in the cold winters, only to be splashed by buckets of cold water so that their bodies would freeze faster. One of the stories that emerged was that Elizabeth, in a fit of rage, bit into the flesh of one of her servant girl's faces, leaving a bloody mess. The largest and most gruesome tale of horror that emerged from the castle of Elizabeth Bathory is where she got her name, the Blood Countess. Elizabeth had an insatiable lust for youth and would achieve it by drinking and bathing in the blood of her innocent servant girls. She discovered this bloody fountain of youth after getting blood on her skin during a torture session. Elizabeth noticed that it made her skin soft and youthful, and her obsession began. Screams penetrated the walls, being muffled by the stones that lined the castle. Deep in the dungeons, the torture chamber, the victims of Elizabeth would scream until their lungs burned, but no one answered their cries for help. Instead, 
they drowned in their own fear-filled wails as the cold embrace of death welcomed them, ending their suffering. The blood countess would kill young girl after young girl, stealing their youth and keeping it for herself. Eventually, her cruel crimes and killings would catch up to her. It is said that Elizabeth and the servants who helped her commit torturous crimes were due to be punished. Officially, as official as it records back then get, Elizabeth was charged for the death of anywhere between 50 to 80 people. However, rumors say that she killed as many as 650 girls. While her servants were sentenced to death, Elizabeth was imprisoned for life. She would spend the rest of her time locked up in a dungeon within her castle. Just three and a half years later, in 1614, she was found dead inside her tiny prison. And the world would forever know her as an evil vampire, the Blood Countess. Or did this really happen? Some say that her rivals like King Matthias II spread the rumors to help solidify in seizing her castle and power. After all, it wasn't uncommon for women, in power or not, to be accused of witchcraft and other such crimes. With years of war and power struggles, the enemies of Elizabeth Bathory would do anything to take her power. I mean, the idea that she was taught Satanism and sadomasochism as a child reeks of lies. She was a woman in power back when women were, more often than not, powerless. While I'm not convinced she wasn't cruel and possibly evil, there are other accounts of what life was truly like under the hands of the Countess. Other sources say that Elizabeth was a good person who took care of her servants. Due to the brutal medical practices in the days of the early 1600s, the procedures were excruciating and almost seemed torturous to us nowadays. Some medical procedures that took place were as gruesome as cauterizing open wounds with sharp metal pokers. Although the truth of how many people she tortured and killed have been lost through years of rumors, storytelling, and embellishments, Elizabeth Bathory did commit some gruesome crimes. After all, it is confirmed that she had some hand in ending her servants' lives. Whether through medical procedures or torture, I have no idea. Was she truly the blood countess that we all know her for? Maybe not. Thank you so much for listening to Everything is Spooky in the Dark, the podcast for WanderingCrystal.com. Let me know if you think Elizabeth Bathory was truly as horrible as history tells us, or was she just a victim of her time? For me, I'm not really sure. It's hard to say because times were different back then and the records are spotty at best. So she could have been a horrible serial killing, bloodlusting woman, or she could have easily been just a victim of people spreading rumors because they want to take over the power that she has. It's hard to say.